Hello, I'm Tag. And this is Bob. And you're listening to Bob and Tag Talk. Before we start the show, I'd like to point out that the topics discussed on Bob and Tag Talk are for informational purposes only. So please don't take this as investment advice. We urge you to do your own research before making any investment. So today we're going to be talking about market cycles. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, what are the factors affecting a market cycle? And what are the stages in a market cycle? So what is a market cycle? Uh, according to me, like market cycle is something like, for me, my understanding of market cycle always is supply and demand. Mm-hmm. There's a huge demand at, uh, for a particular product or something at one time. Suddenly there is a huge supply. And then these kind of opposing forces will actually adjust. So it affects all these things affect a market, mm-hmm. uh, how exactly a market behaves. So same thing when it comes to the stock market also. I mean, there is a lot of demand for a particular type of stocks, particular industries, particular uh, theme. Right. And then uh, sometimes uh, there is no demand at all mm-hmm. because because of different behaviors of the people who are participants in the market. Mm-hmm. So the different participants in the market are, I think first is the individual investors. Right. And then there are uh, domestic institutional investors. Mm-hmm. Then there are foreign institutional investors. And there may be like uh, promoters and other groups. Right. Promoters are the owners of the companies. Institutional investors are largely, largely companies like mutual funds. Mm-hmm. And then... Can uh, can governments also be participants? Yes, uh, government companies are listed. Government is also a promoter in that case. Okay, okay, okay. So mostly I think government uh, stocks like, for example, you take... Uh, like NTPC or something mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. Usually the stocks are, even if it is listed, the president of India is considered to be one of the promoters, larger promoters. Oh. So shares will either be part of a finance ministry right. or that particular ministry or president of India. These okay. are the three different uh, promoter groups of so, government. can a market cycle be uh, likened to the economic cycle? It, it is very correlated. Mm-hmm. So when I mean say correlated, it means that uh, if the economy is doing well, the market is generally in a good environment okay so okay. everyone is very positive about holding stocks or buying stocks and then selling them right. it's a positive there's a lot of cash flow that is there mm-hmm. in the markets and but, why is it called a cycle so the main cyclic there's because there are multiple phases mm-hmm. and then eventually there is like a very uh, the common phases are like bearish phase bullish phase and then there is a, like a sideways phase mm-hmm. there, there's a normal phase a sideways phase mm-hmm. And then uh, there is like a recession phase. Okay. Or and all that. So this eventually like every 20 years we have a recession. Right. And every 20 years we have a bullish phase. The number of years may be shorter or longer, but there's always a phase like that. Same with the economic cycle also. There's the, you, sometimes you hit that inflation sort of a phase and then. Yeah, you... yeah. So all these are correlated with the economic scenario because it depends on the policies of the government. Right, right. So some governments will sometimes want to go into recession. Sometimes government themselves wanted to go into a recession because the interest rates are too high and uh, they want to avoid kind of a scenarios where the price is increasing too much. Right. So you mentioned words like bullish, bearish and all. What do they mean? They are generally like sentiments of the participants in the market. So when generally bullish means that people are willing to buy higher mm-hmm. at higher prices mm-hmm. because they are confident that the price will increase. Mm-hmm. They can probably sell at a later uh, and then they can make a profit. Bearish faces are really, uh, you can say they are not pessimistic. Okay. They are pessimistic about the economic scenarios or about the kind of money flow or some cash flow and things or something pessimistic about the earnings of a company right. and so on. Right. So they are they are not willing to invest too much money uh-huh. at this point of time. Uh-huh. They are in a waiting phase or either they are in a phase where they want to sell their assets and then they want to go to... A, Kind of a lower risk, oh, okay. Uh, market, a lower risk product. Okay, so you also talked a little bit about the factors that influence, you know, uh, the cycle, market cycle. Uh, what uh, what makes it progress higher? What makes it progress lower? So you said some of them uh, include the demand supply thing. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then, uh, did you also mention government policies? Government policies, yes. Okay. Okay. What other like factors, major factors that affect, you know? Uh, a market cycle? Uh, one of the other factors are interest rates generally. Mm-hmm. So when it takes government policies, government, it depends. Some countries have government and then the the central bank as mm-hmm. separate entities. Okay. Some have combined powers right. and so on. Right. So but the banking kind of interest rates, whatever they set, mm-hmm. set by the central bank, mm-hmm. it has a really 
uh, kind of an effect on the whole economy mm-hmm. so if the basically if they set the interest rates too low mm. so so the banks who are borrowing from the central bank mm. they are encouraged to lend more mm-hmm. and then uh, people are encouraged to get loans mm-hmm. more loans and then they will be investing or doing something mm-hmm. productive with that particular money mm-hmm. and then so there's a lot of cash that is being distributed into the economy mm-hmm. they call it as the liquidity uh, right. on the particular um, economic scenario okay. if there's liquidity in the economy then the prices are increasing okay. so asset prices will increase mm-hmm. then generally uh, other uh, prices will also in consumer prices might increase and mm-hmm. so on mm-hmm. so the after effects so there are a lot of push and pull effects mm-hmm. that happen because of a one particular policy that is mm-hmm. being set either by the central bank or the government so uh, that would also mean that the availability of raw materials or say like new technologies or old technologies going away all of that also could affect the econ- uh, it could market. affect for yeah. example uh, technology is generally considered as deep deflationary 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 so for example if 100 people could do a job if technology using a technology could reduce it to 10 people right. that means you are deflating the uh, the kind of uh, uh, the the economy right. in that in that okay. particular okay. sense so less people but more efficiency more productivity mm-hmm. so technology is generally considered to be deflationary and this has a kind of uh, a kind of an effect on Uh, all the market cycles as well okay okay what about the raw material availability of raw materials obviously yeah availability of raw materials again depends on supply demand mm. but generally also prices mm. sometimes uh, if prices are too low mm. that means there is too much supply there is too much raw materials people are not willing to buy so when you mention like garment policies and you know when garments set policies that causes like a ripple effect uh, let's say the uh, right now there's this push towards say like the electric vehicles or yeah, whatever yeah. it is so uh, people are wanting to cut down on fossil fuels and all of that hmm. so that will also affect uh, um the market right because the government is pushing uh, a certain um electric uh, vehicles yeah, whatever yeah. thing which means that we have to lower the consumption of oil yeah. and so at least that. in our country uh, the main reason for doing that mm. because we have a lot of imports of oil mm-hmm. so we want to we have a lot of dependency on these oil producing countries mm-hmm. and then because our whole economy is based on oil mm-hmm. so if only if we are consuming oil then we can do a lot of you know productivity and then for transportation and everything mm-hmm. so th- the whole point of moving to electric or a different kind of energy products is mainly because of that oh, okay. and then oil is the main contributor to inflation at least in our country oh. most of the countries are it is like that mm-hmm. most of the oil consuming countries mm-hmm. or gas consuming countries mm-hmm. some uh, uh, northern hemisphere countries which are very dependent on energy for their heating and then mm-hmm. uh, those kind of because the climate is mm-hmm. very uh, it can get frozen mm-hmm. frozen temperatures and so on they need a lot of energy okay. during winters and so on interesting so f- so far we have spoken a little bit about what the market cycle is uh, about these sentiments the different sort of sentiments that can happen in a market and a little bit about what factors affect or influence the market cycle so i suppose we can probably jump into the stages or the phases yeah. of a market yeah. cycle now so what is a uh, stage 1 say of a market cycle i mean generally it is the accumulation phase mm-hmm. or the in general no other turns in a normal phase where uh, you are up, you are looking forward market is always looking forward mm-hmm. so it is looking forward to increase in values and assets mm-hmm. so that is the time when most of the smart investors will try to accumulate some kind of uh, assets okay. either it is stocks or commodities whatever it is uh-huh. so they know that in the future the prices may be a little bit higher or right. the market will be in a good condition where there will be a lot of demand right. from the consumers and so on mm-hmm. so you try to accumulate as much as you can and it's it's in this phase that people are let's say uh, just going up from a recession or going up from a decline is that the idea probably the uh, yeah the market has been depressed for some time possibly okay. Okay. or there is an economic scenario where uh, you know it is going to be a very good uh, economic scenario that is going to come, yeah. come the yeah. next when year when you are looking forward it's yeah. lo- looking up is the looking idea up. yeah okay okay so that is the accumulation phase yeah so the sentiments are usually very Uh, it's not exactly bullish also right it's not generally bullish sentiments can be again different mm-hmm. so smart investors generally invest don't look at the sentiments mm-hmm. they they are contrarian in nature mm-hmm. so if the if there is a bearish phase then they will be contrarian people will be bullish at that time uh-huh. they will buy more uh-huh. if there is a bullish phase they will try to sell more uh-huh. so again uh, what kind of investors 
uh, are investing, their uh, their sentiment is different okay. compared to the general market sentiment. So then, what is the next uh, stage? Next stage is generally the markup, where exactly the prices of the assets are generally getting higher. But people are just going to buying it. People are more confident mm-hmm. of uh, where they're investing in, mm-hmm. so they are uh, actually willing to spend a little bit more. And then the assets, uh, the prices of the assets are moving upwards. Okay, so the what happens to the smart investors at this stage? They'll probably hold on at this particular time, obviously. Okay, and then the other investors will sort of like chime in and chime start buying. In. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and that's why the prices sort of increase and increase yes. and increase slowly, yes. slowly. Okay, so uh, would it be fair to say that the most sentiments are like a little bit bullish? So generally, things are getting bullish, but probably it is not there yet. The next phase is the actual bullish one, where people are really, really positive, and the market sentiments are positive. What and is the name of the phase? Bullish phase. I mean, I, bullish or let's say distribution. Distribution. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So when things are getting bullish, uh, all of the investors, even the individual investors, all kinds of investors are actually buying mm. assets. Because the, uh, the economic scenario, probably there is more liquidity in the system, the economic scenario is very good, or the GDP of the country is really increasing, mm-hmm. or it could be a lot of other positive uh, notes or positive sentiments or positive news that is coming up. Mm-hmm. So because of that, everyone is trying to buy into it. Mm-hmm. But uh, doesn't it reach a saturation point, the prices and all, at one point? It depends. I mean, it's, if it's kind of a normal bullish wave, it's kind of a mania. Mm-hmm. A mania is when prices can increase so high that... Uh, it's something they are really not tied to the fundamentals. Mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. fundamentals are saying something different, and then the actual prices are saying something different. Okay, okay. So that will be kind of a mania phase where things are too high, and uh, and you can never predict during a mania. You can never predict what is the highest maximum price it can be. Right, right. In the, any kind of market that can be like, for example, recently, right. Um, because of all these uh, trade shortages that mm-hmm, happened, mm-hmm. there was a lot of mania in copper, lithium, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. those kind of uh, rare commodities. Right, right, right. Some rare commodities and some common commodities. Okay. Because uh, there was a lot of shortage. Uh-huh. And same thing happens in kind of like uh, in 2000, 2001, there is a mania of all uh, you know uh, IT stocks or software company stocks. Mm-hmm. The same thing recently, we have this mania about crypto and then a lot of other uh, new software companies or mm-hmm. services subscription based companies mm-hmm. the mania phase is always there it, it comes up every 20 years we are at least in the last 20 years we have seen at least two twice or thrice mm-hmm. so it always comes back so, this is why we say it's a cycle ah okay okay so i have a question from what i understood of the distribution phase is that um, the prices are rising people are still buying and everything but there are uh, some people who uh, who sell at that time and Smart people will sell at that time. You have to know that uh, at some point of time, this price is really more than what you expected or not more than what the fundamentals are saying. Okay, okay. So at that time, let's say smart investors start start selling and eventually the um, the sentiment turns sort of mixed or like conflicting about where the market is going. Yeah, that's okay. the, yeah the mania piece is always like that. Okay. It's kinds of uh, turns conflicting data. The data does not... Uh, really uh, correlate with the price. Ah, okay. So there's sometimes like overvaluation. Overvaluations, and, uh, yeah. All right, okay. So that is the distribution phase. Mm. What is next? The next is the recession phase or the bear phase or can be a decline, general market decline. Okay, okay. So and it, it is always introduced either. So the, there needs to be a trigger to stop the mania. Okay. It can come from the government. It can come from an external shock to the system. Like uh, it can be a COVID scenario. Mm. It can be something like... Uh, uh, some war mm-hmm. or it can be any kind of an external shock to the system which uh, makes all the investors uh, think twice about By paying too much ah, okay, so okay. that will be the break or the stopping point of the mania and then sudden uh, reversal or it induces a sudden crash okay. and generally at least now what we are seeing is raising of interest rates huh, huh. raising of industri- interest rates what will happen is um, the banks will have to stop giving more loans mm-hmm. or whatever the loans they are they are already uh, people are already having they'll charge them mon- more emis okay. or more more interest okay. so eventually all the companies and all the individuals who have taken loans either need to pay higher uh, emis or higher interest right. or they need to close the loans right. and completely give back the money to the bank and close the mm-hmm. loans mm-hmm. so this will what will happen is the the banks and the central banks are sucking out liquidity from the system right so this will cause asset prices to fall down mm-hmm. and then there will be a correction 
So yeah, we spoke about what are market cycles, um, what are the different sentiments or the uh, human behavior that goes into a market cycle, what are the factors that affect a market cycle and the four different stages, the accumulation stage, the markup stage, distribution and decline and the, mark, uh, the sentiments that go along with it which is bullish, bearish, neutral, whatever it is. We also saw why it is important to understand market cycles uh, in order to invest better and uh, yeah I think that's a good spot to end it there today hey thanks for listening to Bob and Tag Talk please consider following us on our Instagram and Facebook pages we put out weekly summaries of the topics discussed on the podcast and if you found this episode informative please like share and subscribe